Hey everybody, it's Tom, WA2IVD. For this installment on the FTX-1, I had about three different topics in mind. But last week, Yezu released a firmware update for the FTX-1. This is November of 2025, in case you're watching this at some point in the future. So with that in mind, I thought the best thing to do this time is take a look at how we install a firmware update. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we need to do is get the firmware. And if you just type Yezu FTX-1 into pretty much any search engine, that should take you to one of the results having the Yezu FTX-1 series on the Yezu website. So we're gonna go there, and that brings us to the Yezu page. And if we scroll down a little bit, you will see here, Updates. And if we click on that, we'll come down here and we see Firmware Update Information, November 5th, 2025. And then here is the actual update right below it. So let's click on the information first. And this tells us what the versions are, so 107, 110 for the main, 105 for DSP, 105 for SDR, and then if you have the Optima, that's it, and that's called control, and that's 113, 0113. And this tells you what they're going from the previous version down here as well. If we scroll down a little bit, it will tell us what they've done. After completely installing the firmware, the FTX-1 must be reset. And then it goes here with instructions on how to reset the transceiver, which is you hold the back and the find fast buttons in while you turn the power on. All right, let's go back and then let's download the firmware update. I've just created a folder in downloads called Yezu FTX1 where I'm going to put this. So I'm going to say save. And then that's saved it there and that's done. So we'll go into that folder. And again, the instructions for this are going to vary a little bit depending on whether you're a Windows user or other operating system. This is a zip file, so I'm going to right click on it in Windows and say Extract All. And this is going to actually create another directory under this that I don't really want, so I'm going to just put the files here. And so now this has extracted all of the .sfl files, which is what Yezu uses to load them into the radio. And then there's a PDF which has the instructions on how to do the update. All right, this is the update manual. And it's got a bunch of important notes here. We're going to skip past the how you confirm it. And we're going to go down here where it tells you where you need to save these. And you need to save them underneath the FTX1 folder on the micro SD card from the radio. It cautions you that you need to use a micro SD card that's been formatted by the radio because when you format the card it will create this folder structure and then you need to have the SFL files under FTX1 but not under any of these other folders. Let me get the micro SD card from the radio and we'll pop it into the computer. All right, I have popped my SD card, actually micro SD card, into the computer. And on my computer, it shows up as the F drive. And you see there is an FTX1 folder. And if I click on that folder, we see underneath it is the capture, memlist, menu, playlist, and QSO log that it showed us on the instruction page. So we're gonna go back into my downloads folder and I am going to take the five .sfl files and I'm going to say that I want to copy those and then I am going to paste them 
into this folder. So these will be underneath the FTX folder, but not underneath any of these. So this is where they need to be in order for the radio to recognize them. And this is a very important point. You don't need to connect your computer to the radio. You just need to copy all of the firmware update files onto the micro SD card. And then we're going to put that in the radio and the update will take place from there. You don't need a, a computer cable or an interface cable to do this update. All right, I've got my micro SD card here programmed with the files and we're going to Stick it back into the radio and push it in. Setup, isn't that interesting? It actually came up with setup. That's because I put it in with the radio powered on. Probably should not do that, but let's see what happens. All right, we have our menu here, software version. This is all the versions that are in here right now. I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually I'm going to go all the way back so I can show you how to get there. So we're going to press the function button and just so you can see how we get here, you're going to come into menu page one of three. So we're going to hit forward to go to page two, forward again to go to page three, and we want to go to extension setting. And we want to go to SD card. And we're going to go down here to firmware update. And we're going to press done. I don't know why they chose done for select, but that's what's on the menus. And now it says that it's checking the SD card to see if there's software available, and there is, because we now have a ready here. And it says ready on every one of these, and so we want to put a check mark on every one of these because we want to update every single one of them because there's new firmware for every piece. So we're going to hit update. And if you have an FTX1 that's not the Optima, you just have the field, you're not going to see this OPT on the bottom, so don't worry about that. But if you have the Optima, you will have the OPT only if you have the Optima part of the radio connected, obviously. So we're going to update everything here. I'm going to hit update. It's asking me if I'm sure. I'm going to hit OK. And it says, do not turn off power because that would be bad. So you're going to want to make sure when you're doing this that you have either a power supply connected or if you're doing it on a battery, make sure you have a fully charged battery. You cannot do it on the internal battery on the field. You have to have an external 13.8 volt source connected. We'll keep track of how long this actually takes. About three minutes so far. Patiently waiting. If things go like they normally do, my phone's going to ring in the middle of this. We're up over, a, uh, we're at about six minutes, sorry, five minutes so far. All right, three down, two to go, and we're about seven minutes in so far. All right, four out of five, and we're just about 10 minutes in. This one looks like it's going a little faster. All right, I just finished the Optima, so we're about 
just a little more than 10 minutes and it's resetting the radio. Touch the screen to continue, error code 001. This does not look good. Insert latest version firmware SD card, touch the screen to continue. We already updated all of these. So I think what I'm gonna do is power this off. And it does tell you you have to do a hard reset, which is hold the back key and the find fast key and then power it on. All right, and then it came up with two meters and 40 meters. These are the frequencies that it says that it'll come up with on a hard reset. And then let's go back into the menu here. We'll go to extension setting and we'll go to software versions. And I think I have to go back and look. I didn't bring the documentation out with me. We're going to go double check these and see if these are correct. We'll be back. All right, we are back out in the car and I've got the software settings up here. And I have to tell you, through the magic of editing, it's actually a couple days later. And the reason for that is because when I came back out here and recorded this segment where I was checking the firmware, I forgot to reset the settings on my camera that's filming the radio. And when I power that camera back up after I turn it off, it goes into automatic mode and for whatever reason, the screen shows up way too bright and blows out everything and you couldn't see anything. So, here we are again. But, back to where we were, we loaded the firmware and I wanted to make sure that we had the correct version in. And all of the versions that you see here on the top four are the ones that we loaded, which is the latest update from the beginning of November. The bottom one here for the Optima is supposed to be version 01-13, which you can see here it is. But when I checked it the other day, it actually wasn't, and I had to reload the Optima one again. Even though when we were watching it loading, it looked like it did the Optima part and finished it and said it was done, and then it restarted the radio. But for whatever reason, it didn't take, and that was actually showing the old version, so I had to go reload just that one piece again, and then everything was fine. So we have the correct versions in, and as far as I can tell, the radio seems to be working normally. All of the, all of the things I could do before, I can still do HF works, transmit, receive. Um, so everything seems to be fine. As far as the improvements, the APRS, if you've seen my previous video, and I'll put a link to it in the description, I had talked about a couple videos ago, before the tutorials, that the problem I had with the APRS on this is if I had APRS set up on the subband and had this on the two meter APRS frequency, I would receive messages and it would beacon out the position and all of that worked except that the radio would just sporadically lock up. And I actually wasn't sure why it was locking up, but I mean, it would lock up where none of the controls worked. You could power it off. And if I powered it off and back on, it would be fine again for a while. And then it would lock up again. And through some experimenting, I found out that if I turned off the APRS modem and turned, you know, turned off beaconing, turned off APRS altogether, and just had, you know, two meters and HF or, you know, any combination here between the two bands, everything was fine. All of the lockups went away. The radio hasn't locked up at all using it as a normal radio. 
turn IPRS beaconing back on, and it would work for a while, but then the controls would lock up. It would still be receiving. You could hear things from both, both sides, but you couldn't control anything. So I did another test with APRS, went driving around, turned on APRS on the subband, and this update says that it has improved the stability, I think that was the term they used, for APRS and C4FM operation. I guess you could say the stability has improved because now if I put APRS in, as soon as I get a message or a beacon from any other radio, when it receives a beacon, either the first or second beacon, it locks up. All right, let's try this live. I just powered it back up. We're gonna go into the menu, APRS settings, uh, APRS beacon, well, I'll show you all of my settings. We're on smart beacon. I don't have any unusual settings in here. And the smart beacon setting, the only thing I changed was my high speed just so I would make it go into high speed more, so it would beacon a little more. And the rest of the settings I pretty much left at the default. And if I go into the filter, I'm going to go to pop-up, and I am going to say beacon off, message off, so it shouldn't pop up for anything, and I'm going to turn off the beep, oops, ringer, for everything. And we'll just see if maybe that'll keep it from locking up. So it just beaconed. And if we go to S list, we have a bunch of stations. Apparently, I've heard myself. So. <laughs> and we've already locked up again. So it just takes a couple of received messages to completely lock it up. Apparently, no matter what you're doing. Yeah, we got nothing. We got nothing. We are locked up again. So I guess it's more stable because it locks up much more consistently than it did before. But I wouldn't say that's actually what I would consider an improvement. That's all I have for this update for now. I have not done any other extensive testing with the radio. I've been using it for several days, though, since I did the firmware update and Everything seems to be fine, but the APRS stuff does not seem to be any better. That's all I've got for this time. Next time, we'll actually look at some more operational stuff, but I wanted to go through doing this latest update that, again, this is November 2025. That's the latest update that came out for the FTX-1 from Yezu. And now you know how to install it. Hope this helped out some of you. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Radio A to Z.